In the last tutorial, we installed WordPress in our local server, and we have it running now, and so we're ready to get started on creating templates and themes for WordPress. So we're going to be doing a number of different things in the subsequent tutorials, but the very first one is just about understanding where the template files are and how to create the very, very, very basic template for WordPress. Now, first things first, and that is where the files are. Um, in your dashboard, you can click on this to change your theme completely, or you can go to Appearance, Themes, and you'll get to the same place. Now, we currently have two themes that are installed. The current one, which is 2012, and then another one which is available. And we want to find out where those are. So I'm going to go to my folders for WordPress, and here is the WordPress installation on our local server. Then I go into WP Content and Themes, and here's the two files that we are folders that we have for the two themes. If I go inside of one of these, you'll notice that there are a mess load of files. All these files are associated with this particular theme. Now the thing is, you don't need this much in order to have a very effective um, theme or template in WordPress. These are all um, special files that do special things and we're going to talk about those when we get to the template hierarchy in a much late, later tutorial. For right now, I'm just going to ignore all of that and start off with creating the most simple basic template we can possibly do in WordPress. So in order to do that, let's find out where I've got my files. Um, if I go into the folder called WP Basics, you'll see that I have three files. All it is is a style sheet and an index.php file and then the screenshot. The style sheet is the first file that you need. The style sheet has some important information about this file, including the theme name, the URL or URI of um, where that's coming from, like your website, a description of the website, who the author is, the version of it, and some other licensing um, information if you want. And I think there's actually a little bit more information that you might be able to add. Now, after this, um, in fact, even to the description, you can add some HTML and such, I believe. Um, after this, you would put the styles for your website, which, of course, I'm not covering anything about CSS in these tutorials, but um, that's where it might go, or you can create your own style sheets as well. But this style.css file is required to be in your installation. The next file that's required to be there is the index.php. And inside here, I've got a few things that are important. First off, I want you to notice any of these comments that I have are going to be used for us to talk about that particular item. Um, except for the Google code that I have right here, the, the HTML5 shiv file. And that's, order, that's in order to make sure that older browsers can read the HTML5 tags that we have on here. Anyway, um, the first tag that's required is this one right here. It's WP head. This is important for um, plugins and for output of certain features of WordPress that go into the head section of the website. And that's required to be there. The next thing that we're required to have is a navigation output. Now I'm using the WP nav menu, which, which is just one of the basic ways to do it. Um, this is just giving me the default um, page output and uh, you'll see that this is quite effective just as simple as it is the next thing that we need is doesn't look that simple but it's called the WP loop and this um, is a simple loop that says if we have some content it says if we have posts otherwise content on the page while we have some content to show let's go ahead and get that content and then show the content here and that's echoing the content. Then we say, um, let's end that while and let's end the else. And actually it says end the content loop. Um, and after that, or if it's not true, then go ahead and output a, men a um, message here, which is an error message. We don't actually have to have an error message, but it's really nice to have in case you need do some troubleshooting. After that we have sidebar, footer, and then at the very bottom we have the required library for plugins um, 
our libraries and plugins and other things like that with WP footer. So then this will be JavaScript files and other things that are needed in order for things to run smoothly in WordPress. So basically, once again, all we have is the WP head, a nav bar that we have, our navigation that we have output, the basic page content, and the basic footer output as well. And that makes a fully functional content management system in WordPress. Now to install this, we have a couple options. We can just drag over the folder, which I think is really great, or we can go to the zip file and do it. So I'm going to just drag over the folder because I can put it right into the themes folder with the other two that are there, 2011 and 2012. And you'll see it has my new folder. Then I can go back to WordPress and if I refresh this page, you'll see that it automatically finds that new template. Now, um, I can go ahead and activate this. And once I've activated it, you'll see that some things have gone away. Number one, you'll notice that I have a lot of sidebar items that went away, like widgets and, and other things like that. Um, I don't have any of them here as well. And that's because I don't have any of those features enabled in this particular template. Um, this is the basic template just for, um, of course, for the tutorial. Um, we can also install the theme by uploading the zip file. So if I chose the zip file this way, I could do it as well. Of course, I don't really need to because I already have it installed. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at this site. I have a couple pages that I made, products and services, and I have a sample page that came with WordPress natively installed. And you can notice that as I click on the different pages, I basically get what I need. I have my menu here, and I've got the output of the particular page that I'm on. And that makes a fully functional content management system. You'll also notice up here at the top, I've got the editor bar. Um, and uh, that's really important because you're going to see a lot of code when I actually go view my source. Now you'll notice here at the top, is the output of the required WP head. That's a lot of code that's being output right there. Um, then we have the output of our menu right there. Then we have the output of our content. Let's see, there's our content. These are our services, so very little um, coming out in that content. And then here is the required WP footer. And you'll notice a lot of stuff is coming out there. Now. These are going to change, especially the WP head and the WP footer are going to change their output based upon a lot of different things, like whether you're logged in or not. So I'm going to go ahead and log out just so I can come back to this and go ahead and refresh the page. And you'll see a lot of code has disappeared. And look at the footer now. The footer is outputting nothing. That WP footer is, is outputting nothing at all. Now, what's happening is if I didn't have it, the page would still load, it would still get the navigation and the content. But when I'm logged in, what I get is that um, that uh, footer and the header at the top. You know, if I uh, go back to the test site, you'll see this bar for editing the site stays at the top even while I'm viewing the live site. And that's all coming out in that WP footer. So that's why we need to, to have it there, because that admin bar um, is a result of that using that tag in a lot of ways. So let's go on to the next tutorial where we start to add a little bit more to this, including working with different menus and a couple little functions.